We're leaving beautiful Marathon and are about to cross an image that the Florida Keys are famous for, the incredible Seven Mile Bridge, the gateway to the Lower Keys. After crossing the Seven Mile Bridge, one of the longest bridges in the world, we've definitely left the Middle Keys behind. Next, it's on to Bay of Honda, meaning deep bay in Spanish. Bay of Honda bottoms out at 35 foot depths, the deepest water crossed by the overseas highway. This necessitates a tall bridge to protect the span from hurricane wave surges in excess of 30 feet tall. We're entering Big Pine Key, the second largest of the Florida Keys. The speed limits here are strictly enforced to protect the key deer that inhabit the island, many of which are run over by automobiles each year. A small race of the Virginia whitetail, key deer are between 20 and 30 inches tall when fully grown. Their small size compared to the average whitetail is probably a result of less nutrition available in the keys, causing the small of the species to survive. Let's head to Dolphin Resort and Marina on Little Torch Key near mile marker 28.5. We're hooking up with the premier dive guide in the Lower Keys, Ed Brusso and his pal, Cookie the Wonder Dog. In the Big Pine sector, we'll be diving the G Marker, Big Pine Shoal, Lou Key, the Adolphus Bush, and Summerlin Shoal. After skipping out of Newfound Harbor and into Hawk Channel, we're barreling about 10 and 3 quarter miles, almost due east to our first target, the G Marker. This shallow inshore patch reef is marked by a 20 foot tall green flashing tower, number 49A. We always anchor in sand to protect the coral. About two and a half miles seaward from Bay of Honda Key, the G Marker site averages 15 to 20 foot depths with visibility seldom exceeding 30 feet. Horseshoe crabs feed mostly at night, burrowing into the sand in search of worms and mollusks. The horseshoe crab really isn't a crab, but more closely related to ticks, spiders, and scorpions. Males, which are somewhat smaller than females, clasp onto the female's shell and are pulled into shallow water at the high tide line. Here, the female deposits her pellet-sized eggs, which are in turn fertilized by the trailing male. From the G marker, we're jamming just under seven miles, almost due southwest to Big Pine Shoal. Marked by a 16-foot red flashing light tower number 22, Big Pine Shoal is one of many underrated Lower Keys dive sites. Our dive buddy, Ed Brusso, is a world-class spear fisherman and underwater hunter. A commercial fisherman since childhood, Eddie works thousands of lobster and stone crab traps every year. We'll catch more lobster later in the show. The modern light tower is a few feet away from the remains of an old beacon, which through the years has become a magnet for jack, porkfish, damselfish, snapper, and grouper. You'll always find schooling barracuda here.
The next target, Lu Key, is about five miles, 255 degrees to the west-southwest from Big Pine Shoal. Marked by the 20-foot flashing red beacon number 24, Lu Key has a system of over 30 mooring buoys that allow boaters to tie off without anchoring, thus protecting the fragile coral reef. Lu Key was named for the 44-gun British frigate HMS Lu that sank here on February 5, 1744. In the shallows to the north-northwest, almost due north of Beacon 24, her ballast mound lies covered by a thick blanket of sand. This debris field on the fore reef is rumored to be part of the HMS Lu. These objects are sometimes visible and sometimes covered with sand indicating a dynamic seafloor undergoing constant change. Every year, Lou Key hosts the Underwater Music Festival, where special underwater speakers broadcast a day-long tribute to almost half a century of American rock and roll. spectacular, well-defined coral formations, some colonies nearly 8,000 years old. Our next dive site is about three and a half miles 250 degrees west-southwest from Lou Key. The Adolphus Bush is a deep wreck in 105 feet of water about six miles seaward of Summerlin Key. On December 5, 1998, she was intentionally sunk as an artificial reef. Marked by several mooring buoys, this ship, formerly named Ocean Alley, was a 210-foot cargo vessel featured in the 1957 adventure movie Fire Down Below starring Robert Mitchum, Rita Hayworth, and Jack Lemmon. Her wheelhouse is 55 feet deep. Her mast can be reached in 30 feet of water. Her deck is in 80 feet of water. She is oriented stern north, bow south. heading back into Newfound Harbor Channel. After saying goodbye to Ed and Cookie and retrieving the boat, it's off to Cudjo Key. Near bow marker 21.3, we're taking a right on Blimp Road. At the end of Blimp Road is the government base for two huge blimps that can be tethered to the ground or deployed thousands of feet above. One of the blimps houses a sophisticated radar system, while the other broadcasts TV Marti an anti-Castro television message to the Cuban mainland. Nearby the blimp base is a public boat ramp giving us direct access to Kemp Channel.
In the Blimp Road sector, we'll be diving Sawyer Key and the Content Keys in the Gulf of Mexico. It's about five and three quarter miles, 325 degrees north-northwest out of Kemp Channel to the first target, beautiful Sawyer Key. On the gulf side of Sawyer Key is a sprinkling of coral heads that provide unusual diving in shallow, 12-foot emerald green water with visibility seldom exceeding 30 feet. This porcupine fish isn't too alarmed at my handling it. If it were, it would blow itself up to the size of a basketball as a defense mechanism. This stone crab trap has lost its buoy marker, making it a ghost trap, a terrible prison for stone crabs. Since stone crabs can enter but not exit the trap, the captured crabs resort to cannibalizing each other to survive, as evidenced by the stone crab shells in the bottom. The next dive site in our Gulf of Mexico adventure, the Content Keys, is about five miles, 060 degrees east-northeast from Sawyer Rocks. Here we find more emerald green water with scattered heads and interesting shelf formations. This brain coral has sustained anchor damage. Please anchor in sand to protect the coral.